we need to get to a tax policy that recognizes the merits and the uniqueness of American exceptionalism. A tax policy that recognizes that when 51% of Americans are no longer paying taxes, but they're voting for the people that will give them benefits out of the public treasury, maybe on that day our constitutional republic will cease to exist. But maybe we've passed that point now, and maybe there's a way to get back. So I'll submit here's a way to get back. Let's pass the fair tax. Let's take a look and understand this, that Ronald Reagan once said, what you tax you get less of. He also said, well, you subsidize, you get more of. So if we subsidize dependency, we're going to have more dependency. But if we tax production, we're going to have less production. And this might be a revelation to some people on the other side of the aisle, Mr. Speaker, but the federal government has the first lien on all productivity in America. If you walk into your factory and punch the clock at 8 o'clock next Monday morning, Uncle Sam, is, as soon as you punch that time card in there, Uncle Sam's hand goes out. And he's standing there waiting to get his due. He taxes your work, your labor, your productivity from the first second of the first day of the week, and he will tax it until such time as he gets his due. Then he puts it in his pocket, and you can go off and go to work for the state, then for the county, uh, then perhaps for the city. And sometime pretty late in the week, you get to make a little bit of money to feed your kids. First lien on all productivity in America is Uncle Sam. Hand out, you punch the time card. Maybe you put that savings that you have that's left out of what he doesn't tax, and you put that in a bank account or invest it in a, in maybe in the stock market, maybe in a mutual fund. Well, there's the interest, there's the dividends. Guess what? Uncle Sam's hands out for that too. Maybe you invest in a business, and you decide you're going to manufacture automobiles or widgets or computers, or sometimes we say in my part of the district lays, layovers to catch muddlers. If you do that, Uncle Sam's there to tax the profit on it, and he'll tax the labor that goes into it. We have a real misunderstanding here when we decide we're going to tax corporations or businesses that provide goods and services, because something that we know, Mr. Speaker, is that business, and particularly corporations, let me put those both together without drawing a distinction between them, businesses and corporations do not pay taxes. They have to pass those taxes along to people. Consumers pay taxes. But the government has a first lien on all productivity, so we tax that productivity, whether it is capital gains, if you buy a farm for 1000 an acre and sell it for $2,000 an acre, Uncle Sam wants to tax that $1,000 profit. And if you sell some stock shares and you paid $5,000 and they had a good earnings and you collect $10,000 for them, Uncle Sam wants to tax the difference to $5,000 in profit. And he wants to tax your, t your, your passbook savings account and does. And he has the first lien on your Social Security income, on your pension income, earnings, savings, investment, dividends, capital gains. He taxes everything that is indexed to productivity in America, a first lien on all productivity in America. And why? Don't we understand here in this Congress that what you tax, you get less of? Why wouldn't we consider the idea of taking the tax off of all productivity in America and putting it on consumption? I won't say we have too much consumption because that keeps the economic wheels turning. We have too little savings and investment, though, and if we tax consumption, we will get more savings and more investment, and we'll have more capital, and we'll be better positioned to take care of our own retirement, our own health care, uh, through our working years, and perhaps on through retirement.